In this video, I'm going to be installing Windows alongside a Linux installation with full disk encryption. Now, I'm going to be installing Windows with Linux installed first. I tried to do it the other way around, but I couldn't get Linux to install on the encrypted partition. Before you begin, I would strongly suggest making a backup of your data just in case anything goes wrong. Especially considering that this configuration is not officially supported. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating this with a Ubuntu installation installed with full disk encryption. All right, so now I'm in my Ubuntu installation. So now let me just go into disks just to show you how my system is set up. Now, I have a setup with LUKS with LVM, and there's my logical volume right here. Basically, for this video, I'm going to be assuming the worst case scenario, which is that you have this setup, LUKS with LVM. So now what you're going to do is you're going to need a Linux installation media to follow this tutorial. So go insert that right now. I'm going to be using Ubuntu installation media. Once you've done that, you're going to restart your system. And then once it restarts, you're going to go into your boot menu and then boot from your installation media and then select try or install. And then once that boots up, you're going to go to the desktop and then go into terminal. And then you're going to do sudo fdisk-l to see our devices. And now you're going to find your drive, which your Linux is installed on. So for me, it's disk dev SDA. And I've got my drives size here. And I've got my partitions. So my EFI system partition. And this 2 gig Linux file system, that's the boot partition. And then this much bigger Linux file system, because this takes up the vast majority of my drive, I know that this is my LUKS encrypted partition that actually houses my Linux, and that is slash dev slash SDA3. So we're going to take note of that, and now you're going to unlock your LUKS partition by doing sudo crypt setup LUKS open exactly like that your LUKS partition which for me is slash dev slash SDA3 and then you're gonna need to put a label after it right it doesn't really matter what you choose I'm gonna call it SDA3 crypt and then hit enter, and then punch in the passphrase that you use to encrypt your installation. And now, if you have an LVM setup, what you're going to do, you're going to do sudo LVS, and then this will show your logical volumes. You got the name of the volume as well as the name of the group. You will need that. So now I've only got one volume here, and that's my Linux root partition. So now we've got to reduce this to make room to shrink our physical partition so we can make room for our Windows or whatever other OS we want to install alongside our encrypted Linux. To do that, I'm going to do sudo lv reduce. And now this is the part where it is extremely important that you pay attention and do exactly what I say because if you miss one little seemingly insignificant detail this command either won't work or worse. In fact if you haven't already made a backup now is a good time to stop what you're doing make a backup then come back to this. But anyway I'm gonna do sudo lv reduce dash r dash capital L and then how much space we want to reallocate to our other operating system or rather shrink our logical volume by. In my case I'm going to reduce my 
logical volume size by 64 gigabytes. So I put 64 G, which is the minimum for Windows 11. Now you can adjust this based on your needs. Now you're gonna type the name of your volume group or Ubuntu dash VG in my case, forward slash the name of your logical volume or Ubuntu dash LV in my case. So now let's just check this again. So sudo LV reduce dash R dash capital L minus 64 gigs Ubuntu VG slash Ubuntu LV looks good. Let's do it. And then it'll go resize your logical volume. Might take a little bit, so be patient. All right, so now it says size of our logical volume successfully changed. And now if we do our sudo LVS again, we can see that now our logical volume is much smaller. So now we can go shrink our physical partition. To do that, we can now close out of terminal and then go into gparted, which I know is included on the live installation environments of Ubuntu and Linux Mint. And I think it's included on most Linux live environments that have a graphical user interface on the live ISO. But anyway, once you're in that, you're gonna go to your encrypted partition, select that, then click resize slash move. And now you can simply resize this and shrink it however much you need or by however much you shrunk your logical volume in the case of an LVM setup. But anyway, now I'm gonna resize this and now it'll ask you for your passphrase, again, that you use to encrypt your Linux. So now let's just check this. Yep, this is what we wanna do. So now we've gotta apply our operations by clicking on that check mark and then click apply again. Okay, now our operations have completed and now we've got 64 gigs of an allocated space. So now if your resize operation fails with the year, cannot resize to a certain number of extents as later ones are allocated, it probably means that there's another volume in the way of that. Like here, I got a swap volume here that needs to be moved out of the way before I can actually resize my physical partition. So let me walk you through how to do that real quick. So you're gonna get out of gparted and come back in a terminal, and then you're gonna do sudo pvs dash v dash dash segments. And then it'll show you that now we have our free space here, but then right after that, we've got our swap volume, and that's what's stopping our physical partition from shrinking. So in order to solve that problem, we're gonna do sudo pv move dash dash a l l o c anywhere and then you're gonna find your volume that's in the way it'll be on the end of the space and then you're gonna copy the pe ranges for that which i've highlighted here and then just paste it here and then you're gonna run that and this will take a little while so again be patient all right and then once that's done we can run our sudo pvs command again and we can see that now our swap partition is right next to our root partition and now that free space is on the very end of our lvm setup so now we can close out of here come back into gparted and then try our resize operation again don't forget to apply our operations all right now it completed and we can see that yep it actually applied let's go and install windows so now we're gonna reboot back into our boot menu this time booting from our windows installation media all right so now i'm gonna just run through the windows setup here so i'm gonna install now you can either enter your product key now or later let's accept the license agreement and now we're gonna select custom install windows only. And now we're gonna select our unallocated space, which we created in our Linux 
So let's select that. It actually auto-selected it for me, so we're gonna make sure that's highlighted, then click Next, and then it'll start installing Windows. So now, you'll notice that once Windows finishes installing, that your computer will boot straight into Windows without giving you the option to boot back into Linux. So now what we've got to do is make our Linux bootable again and update our grub configuration to recognize our Windows, as it doesn't happen automatically. I'll show you how to do that right after I finish running through the Windows setup. Alright, so now, if you don't want to link to a Microsoft account, the way to get around that is to just not connect to the internet during setup. So now you might be saying, Drew, Microsoft now forces you to connect to the internet to complete the setup. And as you can see, that's true, but there's a way around that. So what you're going to do is press Shift F10 to bring up the command prompt. You may need to press Shift FN F10 if you're on a laptop, but then you're going to type all in caps o o b e backslash bypass n r o exactly like that then hit enter and then windows will reboot and then it will make you select your country and keyboard layout again but now once you get to the connect to a network screen we now have this option i don't have internet click on that and then continue with limited setup and now it'll prompt us to create a local account so now we'll just set a name. And if you want to avoid creating a security question, you can just set no password here, but then set a password afterward. But now we go through the step of just saying no to everything and setting our telemetry settings to the bare minimum real quick. And then it'll take a few minutes to set up our Windows desktop, and then we can move on to the next step. And by the way, the fake email address trick to bypass Microsoft account creation doesn't work anymore. So now you have to use this trick instead. All right, so now that our Windows is finished installing, now what we've got to do to make our Linux bootable again is restart. And now you're going to boot back into your Linux installation media. All right, and then once you're booted into your Linux installation media, you're going to go to the desktop and then back in a terminal. And then we're going to unlock our Linux partition using the same command that we used earlier in this video, sudo crypt setup luks open our luks partition and then our label and then enter our encryption passphrase. And now you're gonna do a sudo fdisk-l to figure out which device actually houses our Linux, like behind our encryption. So now if you have an LVM setup, then it'll be the dev mapper, your volume group and volume name. So I'm gonna grab that. If you don't have an LVM setup and your system was just installed directly on the LUKS partition, then it'll be a dev mapper sda3 crypt or whatever your chosen label was when unlocking that so now we're going to do sudo mount our device and i'm going to mount it to slash mnt okay so now let's look at our fdisk command again this two gig linux file system this is going to be my boot partition then we got to take note of our efi system partition if we have one for me that's SDA2 for my boot partition and SDA1 for my EFI system partition. So let's take note of that. And then you're going to do sudo mount my boot partition to slash mnt slash boot. And then sudo mount our EFI system partition to slash mnt slash boot slash EFI if you have an EFI system partition. So now once you've done that, you're going to do sudo grub dash install dash dash root directory equals slash mnt and we're going to install it to our drive which is slash dev slash sda in my case. Now make sure you don't put any numbers 
after this because we're doing this to the device, not an individual partition. But now hit enter. Okay, now that our grub is reinstalled, we can reboot. So now it should boot us into our Linux. Now there is another step that we have to do to get it to recognize our Windows and give us the option to boot from that. So now once you're back at your Linux desktop, you're gonna go into terminal and then do sudo nano slash etc slash default slash grub, punch in your password. And now you're gonna find the line in here that's commented out that says grub disable OS prober equals false. You're gonna uncomment that by getting rid of the pound or hash symbol. And then you're gonna hit control X, Y, then enter to save and exit. Now, if you don't have a grub disable OS prober equals false line, you'll just have to write it in manually. But once you've done that, you can do sudo update dash grub, and then it should find our windows. Now to check this, we can reboot. And there you go, now we can see that our Windows is on here, as well as our Linux. So now we're dual booting encrypted Linux installation with Windows. Now, one important thing to note is this does not encrypt our Windows. The second OS you install still remains unencrypted by default. But anyways, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff and see you next time.